Men Who Head Programming, like Raul said, is our entrepreneurship track. Please, it's open to all uh, males and females. So tell your friends, join us, you know, every month, look at our calendar to see who is coming up that following month. Before we get started with Nancy, I'd like to talk a little bit about Seven Head. Some of you guys, it's your first joining us, and you may not know too much about us, but Seven Head is a program for uh, Sarah National. Uh, we have been in programming since 2014, and what we do is we motivate, support, and inspire uh, future entrepreneurs or people that already have a small business and they just need a few questions answered or a little bit of seed money or um, they're looking for something new, how to develop their business. And so that's why we're here to support you guys. If you have any questions, like Raul said for Nancy, this is a great time to do so since we have our gracious speaker today. Hi, Nancy, how are you? I'm doing great, Melissa. So happy to be here. Thank you and Raul for having me. Thank you. Um, before we get started with our presentation, I just want the audience to know a little bit about yourself and what you do with the SBA. Sure, uh, and first and foremost, let me thank the audience. I know that there are a lot of choices out there. There are in today's environment, so many virtual opportunities. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Um, about me, you know, I've been with the federal government now for 30 years. 23 of those 30 has been with the SBA. I started my career in Jacksonville, Florida, out of all places with the SBA, different roles, but eventually found where my heart was at, which is business development. So I ended up uh, in 2011 taking a promotion to run the 8A business development program here in the Dallas Fort Worth District Office, where I serve 72 counties in North Texas. So it's great to be here and I love Texas and being here with Texans. And so, you know, this is home now. This is all Florida is, 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 is no longer home for me. So I really feel at home here and happy to be here. Well, thank you, Nancy, and welcome to Texas. Love that you're here with us and helping our small business entrepreneurs. All right, so today we're gonna be covering a little bit about how and how do you utilize SPA's programs and services to start or grow your business? So consider this a guide to success. I'm gonna give you some tips. I'm gonna share some tips with you that you can use to start or grow your business. Next slide. Okay, let's take a look at this first slide. And primarily, I want you to think a little bit for a little while here on this question. What does every successful large business have in common? Yeah, think about it. While you're thinking about it, I want to share with you what I found out because I did a little bit of research, right? And in my research, I found out that they have in common a lot of things, but most of them share some, a few things in common. Those are resources, capital, connections and contacts, a trusted advisory uh, board or a board and, and a board of directors, and lastly, an advisory board, usually composed of their trusted advisors. They all have that in common. And I oftentimes find myself counseling small businesses who say, I am small and I can't afford an advisory board. Well, I'm here today to tell you that that is wrong. You can afford one, and I'm gonna tell you how you can afford one. Okay, so before we start, I'm gonna share with you a little bit about SBA. So the SBA was founded in 1953. It's one of the smallest agencies of the federal government. We do hold a cabinet position. So what that means is that we have firsthand um, the president's ear because he, um, we're sitting at the table basically with him and we're able to share um, issues of concerns to the small business community. So we play a big role. We're small business advocates and we're always advocating on your behalf. Um, but also to most of our programs and services fall in a few different categories. 
Um, and we'll cover areas like uh, if you need assistance in starting, growing, expanding, or recovering. So all our services covered one area or another where we can be of assistance in um, whatever objective you have, whether it is to start, um, you're growing, or you're planning on expanding and thinking about exporting your product or um, we'll talk a little bit about recovery as well, which we're certainly in, in a uh, pandemic right now. So I'll talk a little bit about our program. So we're certainly in one area or another, whatever phase you are, you need the resources to help you achieve your goals. So hopefully by the end of the presentation, you will leave confident that you understand what SBA and what SBA what role SBA plays in assisting small businesses. And furthermore, you'll, you'll, you'll be a little bit smarter in terms of what resources are out there for you and how you can utilize them to grow your business. Let's go to our next slide. All right. So remember I talked to you about you can have an advisory council. Well, think of this. The SBA has over 1,400 resource partners in the United States and its territories. We provide, we actually fund some of them um, or they are either approved by the SBA and you can use these resources as your own advisory board. Think about it, there is no charge for counseling. So if you were to visit two or three of these different resources for free, you can consider that to be your advisory board. So you have no excuse now. Now, again, I said that we have all these resources across the US. So if you wanna find the nearest resource to you where you can receive the assistance, support, advice, or counseling you need to grow your business, you need to go to our website at sba.gov forward slash local dash assistance, put in your zip code and you'll be able to get a listing of small businesses, or I'm sorry, small, resource, small resources in your local area. These are some of the resources that I was talking about. Probably you've heard about one or a few of them at one point or another in your entrepreneur career, or if you're just starting, potentially you've heard of SCORE. Um, so there are many different resources and you can utilize all of them, again, they are at no cost to you, so you can receive uh, counseling as often as you need the counseling, no charge. There might be some fee to attend a webinar or to attend some sort of training, but they do offer mentorships, uh, they offer counseling, they offer guidance, and it's all free of charge, again, with the exception of some of the training sessions. But here are some, so the score, there are SCORE chapters all over here in Texas as well as in the U.S. We also have the Veterans Business Outreach Center who's available for our veterans. We also have small business development centers. Uh, we just recently here in the DFW area opened a women's business center. Um, this one is located on Stemmons uh, Freeway um, but it's, it's available and it offers a variety of different types of assistance. And lastly, if you are interested in doing business with the federal government, the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, this one in particular, the Cross Timbers, happens to be located in the Arlington area and they service about 68 counties of the 72 that the SBA covers here in North Texas. So. If um, the cross timbers is not in your area, let's say you're reaching us outside the 72 or the 68 uh, counties that they cover, um, go to the website and trust me, you will find a procurement technical assistance near you. Let's go to our next page. Uh, and we're going to, um, I know a lot of people ask, well, which one is the right resource for me? I mean, you have so many, which one is the right one for me? Well. You know, there really is no answer. And, and going back to my suggestion earlier, um, that you can utilize these resources as your advisory board, I personally would advise you to visit with all of them, um, identify and connect with the different counselors. And if you connect with one counselor in particular who has certain expertise that you feel you can use in your business, 
meet with them on a regular basis. Anytime you have the need for any kind of advice or guidance, um, or you want to bounce an idea off of someone, hey, go to your, what I call your advisory board. They don't even have to know that they're in your advisory board, but they are. <laughs> Just go reach out to them, meet with them and pick their brains. There is no charge for that. So let's go to our next slide and let's start looking at what the SBA has to offer. I'm going to start talking about um, how to build capacity. Um, what things you can do, how you can utilize SBA's programs or services to grow and develop your business. Let's go through our next slide. Our next slide is going to cover um, an area that is close to my heart because I've been doing this for such a long time. And a lot of people don't realize that they can grow their business through government contracting. Think about this. The federal government is the largest buyers of goods and services in the world. If you look at reports, how uh, much the government buys or spends in acquisitions of goods and services, I can tell you that it's at the pace of 500,000 to $600 billion a year, okay? And so if you think about that amount, think of this next bullet right here, which basically states that the government is required to reserve a portion of their buys, a portion of those contracts, reserve them for small businesses. That's the law. You need to take advantage of that as a small business. One important thing I always tell people, you need to make sure that you are ready to do business with the federal government. So if you wanna evaluate your readiness, and learn whether or not you're prepared to do business with the federal government, you can visit our website at sba.gov forward slash contracting. There is a guide there that will help you understand government contracting and what you need to know to determine whether or not you are ready to do business with the federal government. Let's go to our next slide, which um, I'm gonna give you a different perspective on government contracting just to help you understand how the SBA works. Think of the federal government as a playing field, right? Right here, like this baseball game. Notice that on the left picture, you have a tall um, boy, a medium-sized boy, and then you have a small business. Think of this was a large business, medium business, and small business in the federal government. Same illustration, right? Small businesses are at a disadvantage when they compete with large businesses for federal contracts. So these provisions that the SBA has put in place, mainly called set aside programs, programs that allow federal agencies to reserve contract for small businesses. Then you flip the picture over to the right hand side where the SBA has implemented mechanisms to make it easy for small businesses to compete, basically leveling the playing field for small businesses. That's what government contracting set aside programs do for small business. And that's why it's important that you participate in those programs if you wanna grow your business. Let's go to our next slide. So broadly speaking, you can see that um, we're, uh, what I've basically done with this slide right here is translate that regulation of, of set-asides um, to this graphic so that you can understand. So think about it as a big pie, right? The federal government and contracting with the government is a big pie and everybody wants a piece of the pie, right? So the law has allowed the government to reserve 23% overall in contract for small businesses. Then they set aside some additional goals and there is a 5% um, goal for women-owned businesses, a 5% for small disadvantage. That includes also the 8A program, 5% reserve for them. There's a 3% reserve for hub zone businesses. That does not include the state of Texas hub zone program. I don't want you to get it confused, and a lot of people do confuse the two. They are not, there's no reciprocity between the federal certifications and the state certification. So it's important that you understand that when you are getting certified, you are getting certified to participate on the reservation of these federal contracts for small businesses. 
The last one is the service disabled veteran owned small business. Now, I am not gonna go into the eligibility criteria for the sake of time, but we do offer a monthly workshop every first Wednesday of every month from 10 to 12, where we talk specifically on each one of these certifications, the eligibility criteria, and how you go about getting certified. So I invite you to visit uh, Eventbrite, uh, find our SBA Dallas Fort Worth District Office, and it will give you a listing of our certification workshop coming up. Last thing I wanna say about this slide is that if you look at the bottom, any requirements uh, that fall between $10,000 and $250,000 are automatically reserved for small business. Again, that's the law. One important thing that we're always advising our small businesses is there are a few provisions in the Federal Acquisition Act, which is the Bible for contracting officers, right? Because it tells them how they contract um, not only with small businesses, but in general for different products and services. And so um, as a small business, it would be in your best interest to familiarize yourself with FAR Part 19. Don't worry if it seems complicated, that's why you would go to your advisors, your uh, board of advisors that I spoke to you earlier. So let's go to our next slide so that we can cover some more of SBA's uh, programs and services. This one is a great example of how we help small businesses be successful in government contracting. A lot of the challenges small businesses face is they don't have the past performance to go after a contract and be a prime. Well, we, the federal government, want you to be the prime. So we've implemented this program called the All Small Business Mentor Protege Program, where you can gain valuable business development insight from your mentor who has experience in government contracting. And he can help in many, he or she can help in many areas, including strategizing for contracting and partnership opportunities. Uh, they can help you navigate the bidding and acquisition process. Uh, and lastly, they can help you manage contracts by securing the appropriate business and financial systems, resources and financial assistance you're gonna need. One of the key important things people don't understand, it's not only just having the capital to perform on a contract, but it's also having the financial systems in place to be able to process payments and invoicing the government. So there's a lot to learn, but at least you have somebody that can hold you by the hand. And you might be saying, well, what do they get in exchange? Well, in exchange, they are able to perform on federal contracts with you. So it's not a given they're gonna have to work for what they're getting in exchange. And the work is to help you. Uh, uh, learn how to navigate the federal marketplace. Let's go to our next slide so that we can cover more of SBA's program. How about, do you know any entrepreneur that doesn't need any capital, any seed money to start or grow your business? Let's go through our next slide and we'll talk about what type of financial assistance the SBA has available. We have several forms of capital for small businesses. The first one and the most popular one is SBA back loans, or you'll probably heard of them as SBA guarantee loans. That's just one uh, aspect of it. In this type of loan, we actually go, we provide a guarantee to the lender. The lender will um, process the application. They will accept SBA's guarantee and you end up with your loan. So SBA is on the hook for a portion of the loan. So it's important that we and the banker make sure that there is sufficient collateral, okay, to support your loan. The other type of capital that we have is through private investors. So we have a network of investors. It's called angel investors. Um, and certainly they will provide some capital in exchange for an equity position in your business. So those are things that we always encourage you to seriously 
um, look at. Remember, you are relinquishing a portion of your company when you uh, when you're taking on uh, capital from an investor. So you know something not to take lightly. You need to again consult with your advisory board. Don't forget about your advisory board. Um, the third uh, way to receive capital from the SBA is uh, research and development funds. These are grants, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the grant programs, what they're for, but um, it, there's available there. This is in the form of a grant, so you don't have to pay it back, but you need to meet the criteria. We'll talk about that criteria. Lastly, the other way is shorty bonds. So sometimes when you get involved in doing government contracts, and not only government contracts, but sometimes um, you might be asked to provide a bid bond or a performance bond. So SPA has a program where they have approved agents that will provide bonding, and SPA again provides a guarantee. Uh, they guarantee we guarantee a portion of that bond that was issued in your name. Let's go to our next slide and talk a little bit more about um, the the funding. Um, so if you need uh, a loan to start, grow, or expand your business, SBA works with approved lenders or they offer funding through two, through micro lenders who will provide um, SBA guarantee loans. Now, SBA loans uh, are offered at a competitive terms. A lot of people will ask me, what's the advantage uh, or what's the difference between an SBA loan and a commercial loan? So if you compare them side by side, we can offer competitive term terms. Um, we our um, down payment is lower. Uh, there's flexible overhead requirements for the loans. And lastly, those loans come with counseling and education. Where else do you get that for free? So you're not only getting the money, you are getting connected with counselors who are going to assist you in making sure um, that you've gone through the process of applying for the loan and you're offered any other guidance in uh, the, you know, basically uh, the proceeds of those, those loans. Let's go through our next slide. This one is uh, to highlight, you know, the proceeds. What can I use SBA loans for? Because that's a big question. Sometimes people are not sure what can be financed. How can you use SBA's proceeds? So pretty much anything uh, that has to do with your business, you can use it to launch, grow, or repair a startup company. So even if it's a existing business, it's going through hardship and you need to pump in some capital to, to help it, you can certainly do that. You can also buy an existing business. Um, I know of many companies that take the option to buy a franchise. Um, SBA loan can be used to buy a franchise. You can also use it to have a revolving line of credit, um, you know, for working capital uh, to basically cover your your daily, your day-to-day -day, um, operating expenses. You can also use it to renovate or expand your facilities. That certainly is another option. You can purchase inventory, equipment, machinery with the funds. Um, you can also purchase land and real estate. A lot of people didn't know that SBA would allow funds to be used to purchase land or real estate, but it is available. Um, and lastly, we also have loan programs if you want to export your product or service. So let's go to our next page. And I think we're gonna cover the SBIR, we certainly are. So I highlighted the grant programs. These are the only two grant programs that the SBA have. I wanna emphasize this because this is very important. There are a lot of people out there trying to take advantage of small businesses, either selling you a book, on how to get an SBA grant to start a business, and that is incorrect information. Um, SBA only offers two grant programs. These two programs, SBIR and STTR, which stands for Small Business Innovative Research and Small uh, Technology Transfer Research Program. Those are the two grant programs that we offer. So if you are a technology-focused 
or a technology-based small business looking for funds for your research and development or prototyping operations, you can qualify for one of these two grants through 11 federal agencies that are participating in the program. The areas that the government is interested in is artificial intelligence, nanomaterials, clean energy, water filtration, education technology, or wearable, te wearable technology. Any of those areas in which you are doing research and development, you can certainly take advantage of the SBIR or STTR programs, again, which are um, a uh, grant program. And there's more information on our website. Just go to sbir.gov and you'll be able to find more information on our grant programs. Let's go to our next page. And we're going to talk a little bit about the export working capital program that we have. So the SBA has um, two resources that offer you assistance if you want to export your product or services. One of those centers is called the U.S. Export Assistance Center, better known as USIAC, or the Small Business Development Center. We are fortunate here in the DFW uh, area, the Small Business Development Center has advisors who specialize in exporting. So if you're interested in exploring that, please take advantage of that. Also, we can help you find international buyers. We do that through a program called Step Trade Expansion Program, Step Program. So if you're interested, you know, you don't have to worry about finding them yourselves. We can certainly do that for you. And lastly, in exporting, we offer three loan programs. They're called the Export Express, the Export Working Capital, and the International Trade Loan Programs. So again, three programs to support your objectives to expand and grow your business by exporting your product or services. All right, so we're gonna cover um, here our disaster assistance program, which is the recovery aspect of a type of assistance that you might need. Let's go to our next slide. Our uh, disaster assistance program um, are great programs. We certainly, uh, on this side of the fence, are always saying we hope that you are not in a disaster and need this program, but if you do, it's available. And let me say that um, our most recent disaster is the pandemic. So on March 27th of this year, the program, the, I'm sorry, the president declared the U.S., all 50 states in the United States, um, a disaster zone. So in order for our programs to kick in, the president has to sign a declaration of disaster. Once that declaration is signed, it automatically kicks in our programs in place. Now, I told you I had 30 years in the federal government, 23 of those with the SBA and seven with the Navy. And I can tell you that in my 30 year government career, I have never seen the government implement an act in less than a year and a half. The president this time around signed the declaration in March 27. The act was implemented, and within four days of the act, the PPP and the EIDL for the pandemic was born. That's unprecedented. And you probably heard in the news a lot of criticism of loans going to the wrong people. Unfortunately, that happens because in an effort to get the money out in the hands of the small businesses that needed it so much, the government didn't take the year and a half it normally does to implement a program and make sure that it's a program designed, that it doesn't have no holes and nobody can take advantage of it. That didn't happen here because we understood the need. The small businesses needed that money in their hands right away. And we kind of implemented a cookie cutter approach. We took one of our regular uh, disaster loan programs and tried to implement it. It didn't, it, it didn't work as, as we hoped. So, so you saw a lot of adjustments. Um, I remember in the early days 
when the programs kicked out, we were being called on a daily basis and the rules were just changing day to day. Um, it was just overwhelming, but we really, um, at the end of the day, we were satisfied that we were able to share the information and we were letting people know, hey, call us again because things might change tomorrow. So going back to the disaster assistance, um, you know, every year the SBA provides billions of dollars of low interest, long-term disaster loans to help small business. But not only small business, we also help homeowners. We help renters recover in natural disasters. Most often, you see SBA's programs when there's a hurricane, when there's a tornado, when there are fires that devastate a state. But we also kick in in the case of a pandemic. Um, so know that assistance is available if you are ever in a zone that has been declared a disaster by the president. And we can cover um, the funds are, you know, can, can be used to cover anything from real estate, personal property, economic injury. This pandemic has triggered our economic injury loan program. Economic injury because when a small business closes, it loses its source of revenue and it suffers an economic injury. Your bills, your monthly bills are still there and they need to be paid but your revenue stream is not coming in. So the economic injury loan allows you uh, and provides you funding for that source of income that you have lost. Um, we can also, you can also use it if you had losses, machinery damage, um, inventory, uh, you can certainly use it for that. And lastly, lastly, a lot of people don't know, but there are instances where you might have an, uh, a uh, member uh, of your business, or let's say he could be the business owner and he's the key person, or he works where he, he or she works for a business and he's the key employee. If that person gets called to active duty, okay, and it's an economic injury for the business, this program kicks in as well. So as you can see, um, you know, the recovery effort, the disaster assistance plays such a key role in helping small businesses, homeowners recover um, when there's a disaster. It's such an excellent program. It's just so sad that it kicks in uh, at a time when we're at our worst, right? And we have the need for assistance. The good thing is that the assistance is there for small businesses and again, for homeowners, if you happen to be in the middle of a hurricane or affected by a tornado. So, you know, take those into consideration if you're ever in that position and know that we're here to help. Let's go to our next slide, which I think is, um, yeah, questions and answer. Let me, let me say before I wrap up and, and start taking questions that the PPP, which is a payroll protection program loan that was generated out of the pandemic disaster. There's two of them, the PPP, and the EIDL, which is the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. The PPP will no longer accept applications after August the 8th. So if you are a small business and you think that you might qualify, don't wait till August the 8th because the program is available till funds run out. Right now, the funds have not run out but you have until August the 8th to apply for a PPP loan. So if you think you qualify, and if you don't think you qualify, there's always the EIDL, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. And just one last thing on these two programs, they're low interest, remember. The EIDL, the Economic Injury, is at 2.7% interest rate. You get to pay that loan back in 30 years and you have one year deferment. For the PPP, I know the terms change. I think it was 1%. Um, don't hold me to that because I haven't been working on this area for a while now. Um, but again, you get to pay, I think, the PPP in two years uh, and it have a six month deferment. So again, a lot of benefits and a portion of these two loans based on um, the special program that the president signed in, in, um, in March. Uh, a portion of this loan is going to be forgiven. So that's an important key to it. 
Uh, Melissa, I'm, I'm ready to take uh, questions if we have any questions. Well, Nancy, thank you so much. That was a great presentation, so much information. Um, and we are getting questions that are coming through. So let me go ahead and, and get to some of those questions. Thank you everyone that's bringing their questions to the chat. If you have questions, please type them in and I will be asking Nancy for the next 20 minutes. So here we are, somebody wanted to know about the, uh, the protege program. How do they sign up for it? So the mentor protege program, the application is online. Very important thing here to consider is that SBA will not match you with a mentor. You need to identify your mentor. For the All Small Business Mentor Protege Program, you're looking at a company that has done business with the federal government. Don't worry if it's a large business because the Mentor Protege Program offers a waiver, meaning we're not gonna consider the size of the large business, okay? We're gonna allow you to mentor and I'm gonna, we're gonna allow you to partner with them in pursuit of contracting opportunities without considering their size. It's an excellent program. You go to certify.sba.gov to apply for the Mentor Protege Program. Okay, I hope that helped Cheryl that was asking that question. And now we have a, another question. How can I get in touch with an angel lender? And that's from Ray. That's a great question. So you can visit our website our, um, our private investors or what's called our angel investors is a program managed out of headquarters, but they do have a link on our main website under financing. Go to www.sba.gov, click on where it says finance, and you will be able to see a link there that will connect you with a listing of angel investors. If you can't find that link, just contact our local district office at 817-684-5500 and ask them to give you a listing of angel investors and most likely they'll be able to get you that listing for you. And I just have to say for those that are contacting the SBA, I know that they are so overwhelmed with questions and applications that they may not answer your call right away, but I can attest to the fact that if they don't answer you, you leave a message, or even if you don't leave a message, they will call you back within a day or two and say, hey, and we noticed that we missed a call from you, how can we help? Mm -hmm. So please don't get discouraged if somebody doesn't answer or if you didn't leave a message, they will call you back. And Nancy, I want to thank your group for doing that because sometimes you could you do get discouraged. You're calling all these places and nobody's answering. But guys, please know that they will contact you back. So please contact them. Now we have another question here that says the EIDL is a loan based on a credit factor the SBA uses. Is that correct? It is correct to a certain degree. However, if you get denied on the basis of credit, what you need to do is submit a reconsideration and explain the basis, okay, for your reconsideration. There might be something in your credit that is reflecting poorly and you might have good justification for it. There are a ton of different reasons, but I can give you one. We've had people who have been um, affected because they had a family member who got ill, okay, and they got back on paying the bills. That certainly is justifiable. If you look at SBA's criteria to lend, they're looking at what's called character. They really don't reference the score. Character means, are you... Is your character of that of an individual that, that will repay or by nature, are you an individual, an individual that doesn't pay? Um, and your credit history is a reflection of that. So if they look long-term, they're gonna be able to see that there was one time where you used to pay or you had good credit. So something happened and always explaining if it's on the basis of credit, explain your situation because I've seen a couple of people that have been able to have their decision turned around and get eventually approved. Thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Faustina, for, for asking that question. And here we have another one. We have, 
how do I sign up for a veterans program? What program or grant do you recommend that's best for a small startup business affected by disaster? So a business affected by disaster is entitled to any of our regular, either PPP or EIDL loans, if it's disaster related. Remember that what disaster related loans offer you is a low interest rate. We're not gonna help you out if we give you a regular loan where the terms of repaying back that loan are not helpful for you, primarily when you're trying to recover. And that's the reason why the disaster loans offer a deferred period of time. And usually loans are deferred for either a year or two so that you have your ability to recover and be able to repay that. Now, specifically, there are no uh, loans specific for veterans. So in other words, they're available for everyone. You don't have to be a veteran to qualify for disaster loan or a regular loan. Anyone can qualify for a disaster loan. The, the Veterans Business Outreach Center exists because they are primarily interested in helping military connect, either start their business, grow their business. And so through special funding, they're offered that type of assistance. I wanna make the distinction. Thank you, Nancy. Now we're, we're being asked if, uh, you have the SBA has resources on the PPP loans. And also what happens when your PPP loan money runs out? How, is there any other funds that they can apply for uh, if that loan does run out? Oh, that's a good question. So currently the PPP program runs independently from the EIDL, right? So if the funds run out, um, which they, uh, probably won't run out, but anyway, the program will close on August the 8th. But if we run out of funds before then, what we would recommend is applying for the EIDL loan, okay? That would be the next step. Okay, and do they, do you, on the SBA website, is there a particular page for the EIDL and the PPP loans, or are they separate? So the good thing is that we put, because there's so much interest, we put the COVID icon or the you know picture on the front page. So as soon as you access sba.gov, you're gonna see the COVID um, picture. Click on that and that will take you to all the disaster loans, information on how to apply. Um, currently in the DFW area, we currently have only four lenders accepting applications from non-existing members. That was a key issue when we first opened up. The fact that a lot of lenders were saying, I don't do PPP loan unless you've been an existing client, right? And that was a really big challenge because a lot of people say, well, I don't have, I'm a sole proprietorship. I don't have a relationship, a business relationship with a bank. So we did end up having like 2025, but as the funds um, were depleted, and then again, we, we, we got some additional funding, the list of lenders have gone down. So we have four. If you're interested in the PPP loan, um, I would encourage you to call our main office again. I'm gonna give you that number one more time and just ask them for that listing of the four lenders that are accepting the, the application, even if you are not a current member. The number again is 817. 684-5500. Thank you, Nancy. I went ahead and put that in the chat for everyone to see. And we are getting a lot of questions. I hope I can get to all of them. But the next one from Sharon is, I'm a real estate investor. I want to purchase and rehab houses to provide affordable housing and rental homes for Section 8. How can the SBA help me? By the way, I am 63 years old and I'm a female. <laughs> that's a great, that's an excellent question. I know that there are some limitations on what a real estate loan uh, is used for. So what I would encourage you to do is personally call the SBI or local office and request to speak with a loan officer. We have two. You can either speak to Michelle or you can speak to Dorenda and she'll be more than happy to answer that question. Thank you, Nancy. We have a question from Pat. Do you need your LLC for a business loan? 
You do not. You can be a sole proprietorship and still apply for a loan and be approved. We've seen many of those. How to apply for seed money for a startup business? That is from one of our groups. That's a great question. So we currently have what's called Lender Match. That is an online tool where you go, enter your name, contact information, how much money you need and for what, and it will go out to the different lenders in the area. And then you will be contacted back by an interested or a couple of interested lenders that you can start discussing. So we don't have to send you any more to go out and visit with X lender and then get the client and go to an X one. You can just enter your information and those lenders that are interested will pick up your information and contact you. It's called Lender Match. And you could go to our main website again, sba.gov under finance and click on the lender match. Thank you. So here we have, um, how does the PPE program work for small businesses? So the PPP loan uh, works for small businesses and primarily the interest was um, to incentivize small businesses to retain employees, right? We don't want people unemployed. So what we were offering is to pay for the salary of those individuals for lapse of, I think for, was it a period of eight months and I think it got extended. Um, again, don't hold me to it because I'm not a loan officer, but it would be, that was the intent, but it was also authorized for you to use it to pay your fixed expenses. So if you had rent or if you owned your location and you had mortgage to pay, all that was covered in the PPP. So you could use the proceeds, not only to retain your employees, but also to pay those bills at the end of the month that you were having to pay with the condition that the money that you use to pay for the employees, meaning your W-2 employees, that would be forgiven. Now here's an interesting question. Uh, Judy's asking, is there funding for patent? And uh, let's see, a loan, is that a loan for patent? That, that's the question? Uh, she wasn't specific. We can't come back to it. Judy, if you're listening, if you can be more specific about your question, uh, just type it in the chat box and I will ask uh, Nancy here shortly. So I'll move on to the next question. Okay. Uh, Julius asks, I was approved for an EIDL loan, but not enough for my need. Can I apply for reconsideration for more funding? Absolutely, you can. In the subject line of your email, basically states it's a reconsideration dash increase loan amount. Make sure that you provide them your um, loan or application number so that they can reference back. It's very important for you to add supporting documents and explain why you need the increased amount. Okay. Uh, we have another question by Fasina. I know a business owner denied the reconsideration. What else can they do? Also, what would you say to any business owner who is skeptical of taking a loan but needs the money? Wow, that's such a great question. Let me address that last portion first, and I'll have you reiterate to me again the beginning of it. But, you know, there are going to be a lot of people out there trying to take advantage of small businesses. So I, I want you to make sure, first of all, how to spot that, right? Because some of the concern comes from, I've heard horror stories of people that, um, that got taken advantage of. It wasn't the SBA. It made it appear like the SBA. So that's one of the biggest challenges, right? Um, understanding that you are receiving money from the right sources. Because normally we're used to people telling us if it sounds too good to be true, right? And so we shy away from situations like that, which sound too good to be true. But there's a couple of things that you can do to protect yourself. Number one, the SBA will never ask you to provide personal information. In other words, we won't directly reach out to you and solicit from you. The way we market is through webinars like this, training, informing people what's available. But we would never go out to you and say, we have money to give you. Tell us your social security, your PII information, your you know private information. We never do that. So number one, if somebody approaches you with that, primarily asking for money in exchange, 
That means that that's not the SBA. We're a federal agency. We do not charge you for the information we're giving you. We do not charge you for the loan other than the interest rate we are charging you in the loan. So those are some of the reasons. Look, I think it's an excellent program. The fact that you only get to pay 2.75% on this loan for 30 years, trust me, will give you enough money to somehow grow your business and be able to repay back that loan. The other thing is, as you are corresponding with the SBA, if you go to our website, make sure in the URL that the URL says .gov, okay? They're gonna try to kind of masquerade and make it look like it's the SBA. But if you don't see an SBA.gov there, it's not an SBA website. And they could turn to, I just saw one today that had, we had a warning from our uh, system telling us there was somebody using an SBA-GOV. Okay, so be very, you know, be alert to those kinds of schemes because they are out there and they are increasing. The other thing is that if you get an email exchange again, make sure that the, the address of the individual states SBA dot or at SBA.gov. If that's not there, it is not an SBA person. In worst case scenario, call us and say, I got this email and I'm wondering whether or not this is the SBA and at least we can confirm whether or not it is. Can you repeat the first portion of the, the question again? Yes, so the question is, I know this is a reconsideration. What else can we do? Good, good part. So if you've been declined, or if you know somebody that has been declined, has reapplied or has requested a reconsideration and get denied, what I would encourage you to do is to reach, or reach out to our resource partners. Listen, both the city of Dallas and the city of Fort Worth have offered grant programs to assist these small business in recovery. So don't only rely on the SBA, there are other sources out there of funding that are legitimate. Where do you start? You start by contacting your advisory board, the one I spoke to you about. Reach out to them and say, hey, do you know any other sources of um, uh, capital? In, in, in the pandemic that you can refer to me. Sometimes they know of some that we, the SBA, are not even aware of. So those are other resources you can use. Thank you, Nancy. We also have another question. If I want to apply for SBA, SBA loan to buy property to expand my business, do I go to my bank or do I apply through the SBA? Where do I apply? That's an excellent question because you can start off with your lender. If you have an existing relationship with your bank, okay, start with your bank because I'm gonna say nine times out of 10, they are already an SBA approved lender. If you do not have an established relationship then with a bank, then I would encourage you to call the SBA because sometimes our lender relations specialist can work with your banker and if they're not an SBA participating lender, we can walk them through the process and actually get them approved to accept SBA applications. So sometimes you just never know. Your bank might be willing. They just never knew that that was an opportunity and they take advantage of having a client that they want to service and they'll work with the SBA. That's a great. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go through these quickly. Um... How do we get the list of international exports teams which are approved by the SBA? So what we do have is we don't have a team. What we do have is two resources, meaning USEAC, which is the Export Working Capital Office, okay, handles the exporting, which happens to be located at the SBDC in Dallas. So you can contact their office and say, can I schedule an appointment with your USEAC person? Actually, I think his name is Sergio. Sergio was his name. Um, and he'll be more than happy to give you the information. We also were co-located with the export, the US Department of Commerce, the export division, which is actually located in the same building that the SBA is located in ULIS. So you can certainly contact them. We work hand in hand with them and they have representatives that will help you connect with other countries. So those are two sources. 
If you can't get a hold of any of those, call me and I'll be more than happy to find those resources for you. Thank you for being so accessible, Nancy. Here's a question from Diana. Is personal debt credit improvement on the road to growing your business credit services available through SBA? Can you repeat that question again? So I'm assuming what this person is asking is, is through the SBA, you guys offer credit debt improvement to in order to grow your business? Okay, okay. Um, no, but through our resource partners, you might have that. So directly with the SBA, when we normally counsel, we're counseling on our programs and services, but we utilize the resources like the Small Business Development Center, and each one of them might have um, resources for credit improvement, because certainly that's one aspect. If you have a business owner whose credit is, is, is not great, who can I work with? And sometimes the Small Business Development Center or SCORE counselors can certainly work with them on a plan on how to improve their credit, yes. Okay, we have time for one more, and this is from Michelle. I'm trying to complete the PPP um, forgiveness loan application and only find PDF versions. Is there an online version? It's my understanding that they have not developed an online system for the forgiveness. It's just a PDF form at this time. And I really doubt that they're going to invest the resources to develop an online system because this is, remember, this is an exception. We don't get this all the time. Um, normally our loans are not forgivable. So this is a special instance. Unfortunately, we're gonna have to complete it on PDF form. Thank you, Nancy. And thank you to everyone that's watching. I know that we didn't get to all of your questions. I will try my best to download those and send them to Nancy to see if her and her team can answer your questions uh, by email. But maybe, you know, if Nancy has some time in her busy schedule, she can come back to see us and talk to you guys again about more specific uh, topics that you guys are asking about. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. This has been so educational for myself, for everybody that's watching. 